Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders Reptile Advice. Breeding season is upon us and you know it can be a daunting time for novice keepers. Maybe it's your first term, time around doing this. Uh, the whole process kind of confuses you. You're not sure how to approach it or what to do. Everybody's got their own take and all, all I'm going to do today is, is uh, go over the style of incubation I was taught by Paul. Uh, maybe with a couple of things I sort of worked out myself along the way. Uh, it's never let us down. We've hatched everything from black-headed pythons, uh, red blood pythons, cone-head lizards, Madagascan giant hognose, northern pine snakes, false water cobras, uh, corn snakes, bearded dragons, leopard geckos, crested geckos, um, sunbeam snakes, we don't, we've hatched all sorts and all that will change is the mix that you use. Uh, what, what we're going to do is we need to get an old fish box such as you would get from the supermarket that their salmon would come in or maybe if you go to an aquarium centre you might find some taller options but these tend to not be quite as good. We prefer the low and long boxes for setting up these incubator styles. The heat source that we're going to use is going to be a heat pad and as you can see we've taped the heat pad to the lid. Now a lot of times you will see drawings, diagrams and you'll read information and it talks about the heat pad and people instinctively put the heat pad on the floor. We do not do this, I will go through that in a moment but there is a, quite a salient reason why we do not put the heat pad in the deck, we put it in the lid. Um, what we're going to have is a thermostat. Now, we would use either a pulse thermostat or a dimmer thermostat for accuracy when it comes to controlling the temperatures. I know this probably looks very ramshackle, but they don't need to be works of art. This is just one of the four or five boxes that we've got in the back for when we've got eggs on the go. And they all work equally well. Um, we can control and specify a temperature. We can have eggs that have got similar temperature requirements. You must research the temperatures that you require for your animals. Some animals sexual orientation will be decided by the temperature that you use to incubate your eggs. So you must look into that. That is particularly pertinent for geckos, bearded dragons. Um, so you must bear that in mind. Incubation duration can vary greatly as well. Predominantly most snakes are going to take a couple of months, around 60 days, uh, at temperatures between sort of 28 and 32 degrees. But things like chameleons, they can be in an incubator 220, 230 days, and monitor lizards almost equally as long. So you've got to be prepared for the long haul, particularly if you're doing those species, and make sure that you've got your mixes correct and they're pertinent for the animals. So what we're going to do is with our thermostat we need to have an area for our probe to go and what we tend to set up is a master box. The master box has got the probe from the thermostat going into it and what will happen is the probe will just touch the substrate which is the incubation medium. In this case what we're using is vermiculite mixed to a certain ratio. The other boxes that we have in there will run as slaves and these are going to be the boxes that have the eggs in. We use vermiculite and generally for a standard mix we will mix four parts to one by volume, four parts vermiculite to one part water. This will generally last you the 60 days required for most eggs to hatch out okay. Again, if you're breeding monitors or you're breeding chameleons, you will have to look at your mix rates and how long those incubations are going to be and you may well have to top up throughout. What we want to do is do it once where possible, leave them and out they pop. If we're going to set that up, we're going to have maybe an inch and a half, two inches of vermiculite pre-mixed, four to one. Ideally we want to try and find our eggs as quick as possible. We do not want to leave it up to guesswork where we're caught on the back foot and we're not prepared. The thing is if you're going to have pairs or you're going to have two animals together, a very likely eventuality is that you're going to end up with eggs. If you want to breed them or you don't want to miss the opportunity to hatch those eggs out, you must have got infrastructure in place including things like an incubator. So two inches of substrate mixed four to one. We can just use our thumb and we can make regular indents 
for our eggs to sit. Ideally we want our eggs to sit half in, half out. If you've caught the eggs within 24 hours, the umbilicus of the egg is not yet connected to the side wall of the egg and they can fairly safely, as long as you're gentle and slow, be prized apart, such as the case with leather eggs, mainly snake eggs. And these can then be sat at regular intervals, half in and half out of the substrate. What we want ideally is every egg to have equal air to water or moisture exchange. And that's where we come to why we've got our heater in the lid. If we're mixing water into a substrate and we put a heat pad underneath it, that warm air that rises will take water molecules that are evaporating with it. These will then condensate on the lid of your egg box and potentially fall and drown your egg by that condensation falling and smothering the leather top surface, which we need to be dry. So this is why we heat from above, because it eradicates the condensation that people associate with the moisture while still achieving temperature and humidity without there being a problem. So that's it. It's as easy as that. It's to avoid condensation. That's why we heat from above. Some people will heat the sides and their back, um, but we, that's, we, we tend to use low and long where we can have a master box and then we can run slave boxes off with the eggs inside. If obviously we end up with so many eggs, we have to use the master box, we will, but initially we'll avoid it at all costs. Back in. So what, what we're trying to do is set up our infrastructure and have it in place. What we also need to prepare ourselves for is, as you can see, this cheeky little lady is trying to get out. This is a gulf hammock rat snake, which according to science no longer exists. It's a central rat snake. She is a female. I'm not going to hurt you, don't worry and she is heavily pregnant. So what we set up is just an egg laying box with some damp vermiculite and some sphagnum moss in. And the way that we're gonna be able to tell she's pregnant, hopefully it will pick it up on the camera, is just how distended she is towards her back end. And what we can also do to make sure she's pregnant, if we offer her in to be able to crawl over the rib of a vivarium, we can palpate her stomach, which means just gently running your index finger down her belly, and we're gonna feel the bubbles of the eggs as they go. So she's using this box to investigate. She's laying in there quite contently. And I just, normally I wouldn't disturb her, but for these educational videos, I decided it was worth it. Um, she will lay in there, she's investigated it. She's had her pre-egg laying shed um, and she is going to probably lay within the next sort of seven to 10 days. Generally rat snakes and quite a few colubrids will lay between seven and 14 days after their pre-egg laying shed. Bear with me, I'm just going to pop her back. Upon our position, we want to find the eggs that morning. We're in checking every day, so we won't miss them. But as keepers, you need to be aware that the eggs are coming and you need to sort of roughly time yourself so that you know. There needs to be an egg box with damp substrate in so that the eggs do not have chance to desiccate and die before you can get to them to get them into the incubation medium. Once they've gone into the incubator, generally, as we've already said, it's a 60 day incubation and we can draw, uh, we, can, we can create three trimesters of 20 days. Now, the embryos need more moisture content earlier in the uh, incubation process and more oxygen towards the end. So what we can do is we can decide how often we go in to check our eggs. And for the first 20 days, we're only going to do one check every seven days. And a check is one, two, three, four, shut. That's it. If you're in any longer than that, you're letting all of that heated air go. And also, in these egg boxes, we have got a solid lid with no ventilation. And even though these are the old used boxes, but there is four or five two millimeter holes around the edge of the box. Once the eggs are in here, sat in the incubation medium, this lid stays in place until the eggs hatch, once they've gone in your check is only lifting the lid to your incubator. This allows slow and steady air exchange and allows the oxygen to refresh itself without losing all of the temperature that's within the box. That is a really important point. If these are open lids, 
every time you open the lid to your incubator, whoomph, all of that moisture goes. Your medium will dry too quickly and your eggs will potentially desiccate. So bear that in mind. So the first 20 days, one four or five second check every seven days. The second 20 days, one four or five second check every five days. And then the last 20 days, one four or five second check every three days. This will allow the medium to gently begin to dry out. The oxygen um, is, it takes precedence for the embryonic development towards the end, whereas it's moisture at the beginning. So what we're doing is following almost the season and naturally allowing the substrate to dry out slightly. From that initial four to one ratio, you should be able to get your 60 day incubation no problem. This will work for bearded dragons, leopard geckos, um, for corn snakes, rat snakes, king snakes, milk snakes, bull pine gophers. Um, the temperature generally to be safe for the geckos, for beardies, and for most colubrid snakes, 28 degrees to 29 degrees. For royal pythons and other pythons, it tends to be 32 degrees that you incubate at. So I hope that was of use. It's only quick fire and this is just one way of doing it. There's other ways like bamaries and such like, but I thought it would be useful with breeding season being upon us that we do our bit to make sure that we're helping novices and people who potentially are gonna try this for the first time, don't know where to start, don't know how to go about it. At Snakes and Adders, we're all about trying to educate, not just trying to sell you stuff. We want to actually help you develop and become better keepers. That is one of our main driving motivations. I hope that was of use from me and Paul at Snakes and Adders. Peace.